blending data discovery, predictive analytics, forecasting, data mining, and an embedded rules engine to deliver prescriptive recommendations to frontline workers and decision makers. It guides decision making throughout the entire organization by prescribing actions and integrating them directly into operational systems. This video will illustrate how to perform regression analysis using statistical automated neural networks. From now on, that will be referred to as SAN. In particular, we will describe how to choose and retain models using novel state-of-the-art algorithms capable of ranking alternative models based on performance and suitability for the given task according to user-defined search criteria and configurations. This example concentrates on a typical regression time series problem. We will start by opening an example data set. This example uses the Series G data file. The data measures monthly passenger totals in thousands in international air travel for 12 consecutive years. The first thing you will notice is that the data set includes only a single variable. We will be using this as both the input and the output of the neural network. From the Statistics tab, we will select the Neural Nets node. This displays the New Analysis Deployment Startup Panel. From the New Analysis list box, we will select Time Series Regression. Since we will be using the single variable as both the target and the input, we only need to specify the variable once as a continuous target. We can do this from selecting the Continuous Targets column and then clicking OK. The strategy used for creating predictive models in this case would be the automated network search. You'll see there are also other options for a cu custom neural network and subsampling. Next, we will navigate to the Sampling tab. You are able to divide the data set in the subsamples that can be used for training the data, testing the networks during training, and validating the networks after training is complete. You can let SAN create these subsets using the random option, or you can assign cases to subsets yourself using a sample identifier variable. Given the nature of time series data, you might wonder how the data could be partitioned into subsets without disrupting the very pattern that we seek to model. SAN does not actually rearrange the data into subsets. Instead, the cases are left in the current order so that the time series pattern can be identified. Splitting the data into the respective subsets occurs after the predictions have been made. For this example, we will just leave the default settings as they are. Next, we will navigate to the time series tab. For time series problems, you need to make an additional design decision. The number of time series steps to use as an input to the network. For some problems, determining the correct number of input steps can require a certain amount of trial and error. However, if the problem contains a natural cycle period, such as the monthly sales figures in this case, you should try specifying the cycle or integral multiple of it. So for this case, we will specify a period of 12 as that is the natural cycle of this time series. To do this, we'll enter 12 into the number of steps used as inputs field. After clicking OK, a new dialog will appear that contains the same tabs that are available during regression analysis. You can configure the options on these tabs according to the needs of your experiment. For example, if you have prior knowledge that MLP neural networks are best suited for modeling your data, it is reasonable to exclude the RBF networks for the analysis. You can do so by clearing the RBF checkbox in the network types group box of the quick tab. Similarly, if you have reason to believe that the search range for network complexity should be widened, you can use the min hidden units and max hidden units options to satisfy the requirement. Alternatively, if you want to specify the network complexity, you can do so by setting min hidden units equal to max hidden units. Note that the cross entry box is not available since this type of error is used only in classification problems. The more networks you create, the more chance you have for finding the best solution. Usually 20 or so networks are sufficient, but this may depend on the nature of the problem at hand. You can also change the number of networks to retain, but usually retaining five of the best networks is sufficient. In the results dialog box, you can use these networks to form ensembles. Since in most analyses, the nature of the input target relationship is often not well understood, it is advisable that you use as many activation function types as possible. This will help the ANS search for the best network activation function more thoroughly. We will click the train button, and Sam will train and retain five networks. When training is complete, the results dialog box will be displayed and we will select the time series tab. With the options on this tab, you can review a multiple scatter plot of the target versus the predictions for the five models, 
and you can generate time series projections. You can also view the time series data the way they are presented to the network. The time series prediction graph is a line graph that relates the target to the outputs. When a network has closely modeled the existing data, we expect to find a strong linear relationship between the target and output of the network. When this plot results in a line nowhere close to the target of values, it indicates that the networks did not adequately capture the pattern in the target. If this happens, you should try specifying a different number of time steps used as the inputs on the time series tab. From the time series tab, we'll next click time series graph button to create a line plot for the predictions of the network against the time steps. We will use this graph to verify how well the networks predict the time series data. As you see, the degree of fit as well, which yet again is an indication of the time series dependency in the data. Thus, for our example, all the networks seem to model the data reasonably well. If you notice that the first 12 cases of the graph have no predictions, that's because the number of lags we used as inputs was 12. Next, we'll move to time series projections. When the target is projected into itself, SAN also provides options for making time series projections. In SAN, neural networks for time series problems have one step ahead prediction. They predict the next time step from a series of previous time steps. By dropping the oldest of the original input points, adding the newly predicted value, and rerunning the network, a prediction can be made a further step ahead. This process can be repeated to generate an entire time series of predictions. The options in the projection group box enable you to generate a graph or spreadsheet showing the results of projecting ahead a given number of time steps. SAN can take the time series projection either from a pattern extraction from the current data set or from a user specified pattern. We will use the default which is to start at the first available pattern in the data set. This will allow us to be able to compare the prediction with the entire data set. The only parameters that we need to set are projection length and case. Our time series only has 144 cases, of which 12 are effectively removed by pre-processing. So the maximum available data compared with is 132 steps. However, we can project beyond the end of the available data. We will then see the predicted value projected beyond the end of the data set, although we will not have a standard comparison beyond that point. I will create a projection graph with a length of 200 starting from case 12 by setting the value for projection length and case to 212 respectively, and then by clicking the projection graph button. Note that further away from case 144, the more predictions of the networks vary from the normal oscillating pattern that the original data set exhibited. In fact, the outputs of some of the networks lose variability until they become straight lines. Next, I will show how to automate this analysis using visual modeling in the Statistica workspace. We begin by adding the data set to the workspace. Before we can add the neural network, we need to determine the variables. To do this, we add the select variables node. As earlier, we configure the dependent continuous variable. Now we can add the neural net. As you can see, there are more options than before, and this is because we need to specify the neural net type before we begin. We will select a regression with A and S. Next, I will click on the gear icon to configure the neural net. Earlier we used a sample size of 75, test of 15%, and a validation of 15%. Moving to the time series tab, we can again set these options to the same as before. We can now click Run All. You'll see a progress bar at the bottom of the screen. Navigating to the reporting documents, we can see very similar results as earlier, as would be expected. This analysis can then be deployed to the enterprise or saved for future reuse. Thank you.